I realize now that my consistency is just at an all-time low. Like, let's be honest. Alright. I have not been consistent. Right? All that other crap happened and now I'm making this map and making a campaign and oy oy oy. Uploading is just taking a back seat. Reading it. Ay, 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 ay. So what's been happening with me? What's been going on? I've, I've been... I've, been, I've taken a hiatus for a little bit. So... The, the coaching session with Solar was really cool. First of all, because I got to have a one-on-one -on -one session with Solar Baka. Um, best GPNA. Oh, yeah. I thought that was really cool. Um... And he was, you know, he was, he was, he was really chill. He wasn't as critical of stuff as I was about stuff, right? Like he, like damage, I, I was all like, well, I mean, my damage was kind of like bad because I was looking at the numbers and, you know, you're supposed to have like a thousand damage per minute, right? And so the game went like 28 minutes and I was down like, you know, however much damage. But relative to my laner, relative to my jungle, relative to the enemy ADC, I did, I did quite a bit, right? I did on par with the enemy ADC. I did more than my jungler and more than my laner, enemy laner, right? And he was all like, relative to, you know, all this other stuff, right? Like, you know, you you did all right. You did all right. So I, I mean, that that was cool. Um, and also, he um, he said that I, you know, wasn't a bronze four player. Let's play the clip now. Yeah, I, I don't know. You're not a bronze four player. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have some knowledge, but it's just like I don't play as much as I can. Because I have a day job and I'm trying to like yeah. I play so many other oh. different games. That's if, if, if you do want to improve, I mean, something you could do is just look at back, look back at this vod and, uh -huh. look, and listen to the concepts that I say, and then try to apply them to like the few games that you play. You know, you could play three games a day, but if you if you try to at least keep in mind what I say and practice it, and be like, did I do that this game? Right. Did I not do that? Then you'll be fine. You'll be climbing, dude. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, cool. So does that mean I'm a bronze three play? <laughs> no, no, no. I have no idea. I think just consistency, right? Like, with everything in life, you need consistency. But with League, you need, like, you need to only play League. And I don't only play League, dude. I play everything and anything that I think I might like. And, you know, if, if there's a potential to where I might enjoy this, I'm, uh, I'm going to jump in and try it, you know? I didn't always enjoy The Sims. But I recently purchased The Sims 3, and I have, like, almost 24 hours into it. It's not even been a week. I know it could be more ridiculous, but as I said, I play more than one game. Right? We've got Warhammer, we've got League, we've got Oblivion, we've got, um... Slay the Spire on occasion. We've got Don't Starve. Like, this list could be endless, my guy. Endless. I mean, but it's not, right? And then we got that campaign that I'm trying to set up for the boys. Which is happening today, by the way. 
that's happening today. So the boys are coming over. I believe it's it's Gage, Tyler, uh, Austin, and um, not not the butthole Austin and Mark. So that's four, right? Gage, Tyler, Mark, Austin. Yeah, that's four. I hope I have enough sheets for the boys. I hope I'm prepared. I mean, they're just. They're just making characters. They are just making characters, right? So it's it's not that crazy. It's just you know, you know. If we have, if we have enough time, I'll. Well, actually, no, no, no. It's just characters. Just character creation. Because it's it's a system that not everybody's used to. I'm doing this one in um, in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, which. I also told Solar about and roll the clip. Well, not much, not much, dude. How you been? Uh, I've been all right. Uh, making a, a campaign, a, a, a role playing campaign. Yeah. Ooh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, what, what 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 do you role play? Um. Well, we we usually do D and D, but um, I uh, uh, Warhammer fantasy role play. Which is oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but yeah, that's pretty sick, dude. Nice. Yeah, made a map in MS Paint. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what we like to hear. It's it's so cool because I've been telling everybody about this. I've been telling, you know, everybody who will give me. You know, enough of my time so that I can shove that into the conversation. Um, my brother thinks the map is sick, right? He's all like, whoa, that's so cool. This bit right here looks so like Siege of Avalon. I'm like, oh yeah, wow, it does. That's cool. And I made the whole thing in MS Paint, my dude. MS Paint. Like, it's... It's so cool that I could make something so sick in, like, such a basic tool. It's so basic, and yet it's so, it's, it's so good, and it's functional. Mm. I mean, like, I could keep geeking out over it, but bottom line, it's sick. My sister thinks I'm a nerd because of the map. And maybe also because I have so many notes of, like, encounters and, like, stuff. I mean, that I don't think that helped because I was showing her all of that stuff. Because I don't want to tell Mark all this stuff and I don't want to gauge all this stuff, right? Because metagaming can happen, right? Even if the players... Out of everyone that I know from that group, I feel like Mark is... I'm, I apologize. I'm trying to eat cookies. Out of all the players in that group, I feel like Mark is the biggest one to metagame, right? Because he's just, you know, he's that guy who's like, all right, how can I achieve, like, you know, the the, the best I can be, right? You, you fit the game to fit your agenda, right? That's what you do. So... That's why I don't want to give him all this information, but I told him about, like, some items that I made. Um, yeah. Man, I'm just... I want to tell somebody all this crap, but I don't want them to do what Gabby did and be like, Hey, <laughs> you're such a nerd. I mean, obviously, it's true. But, you know, it's... <laughs> I think it's the coolest thing ever. I've never done this before. I think it's so sick. But I gotta contain that. Right? I gotta contain it. I gotta contain my excitement. Cause it's... It can... It can... It can do some damage. And also, I gotta take everything that I think Austin has done. Which I think the make Like, the major points. The huge... You know bullet points to take away from everything that he's done in his campaigns is you know do not um don't <laughs> like he's he, 
ay ay ay. He's, you know, don't be like a massive wall, right? Let your players do stuff, right? But then have like adequate consequences, you know, if whatever they're doing is a bad thing, right? Reward creativity, right? You know, innovative thinking, you know, slap that on the back, man. Like, <laughs> oy, oy, oy. And don't, uh, don't like tell players they can't do something because they always do it. You know, like Gage and his gnome, like that's garbage. Or Mark and his artificer, that's garbage. Or me and my backstory, like, come on, bruv. Come on. Oh, and don't railroad people. Don't don't railroad them, right? Like, I made the story, but I am totally fine with them deciding, fuck your story, right? Because I know at the end of the day, right, that I can derive satisfaction from weaving some narrative somewhere, right? With Austin's campaigns, it's Diablo-esque, where there is no narrative. It's just, you know, come up with a dungeon, make the dungeon appear in the vicinity of the players, or have an NPC who is nameless, shapeless, and faceless, give the NPCs a quest, and then they go and appear right in front of the dungeon, right? So, or, this this right here is a big thing, right? I like to call it self-imploding, right? That's what, that's, that's what I've categorized it as, self-imploding. The act of accumulating way too many great ideas, use air quotes as needed, great ideas to the point where they start, you know, enveloping your entire world. Or, right, and this this thing pissed me off. The first campaign that I played with him, as, as him as the GM, right, he had this cool idea of these, like, guild gate type things that lead to other worlds, right? And he described all that, right? And we never saw one. We played about like eight sessions or something. And these guild gates were never a thing. You know, it's... it's. I, I, I did that before. Okay? Like, I did that before. It's... it's um. One of, one of my first stories I wrote was uh, titled An Evil Were-Rabbit. I wrote about, what, 6,000 words? Yeah, yeah, Bob. About 6,000 words, and I never got to the point where the character became an evil were-rabbit. Right? And I don't want to do that here, right? So I could tell you guys what the main premise of the story is, but what if my players are listening in, right? Jeez, you gotta keep the little bit of mysteriousness happening. No, no, okay, wait a second. I'll tell you because I believe without a shadow of a doubt that no one that I know who I play role-playing games with watches, listens to my, you know, content. Like, that's entirely not a thing, right? So, I guess realizing now, right, thinking now, it's kind of inspired by Dungeon Lords, right? Where this this king, high king dude, has a daughter, and for reasons unknown, she is missing, right? And, you know, a group of adventurers are not tasked with hiring her specifically, but tasked with ridding the world of filth. At least that's Dungeon Lords. In mine, right, we're jumping straight to the adventurers are tasked with, like, 
they 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 have heard word that this guy his daughter is missing like he sent out messages for braves of distant lands searching for people to find his lost seed right and that's kind of where the story is going to take place you know it, the the players have just arrived at Fuselmorph, which is going to be the hub city and I should probably explain the city since you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, right? So Fuselmorph is a port, uh, you know, river city. It's it's got you know, just just a bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, it's it's all encompassed by walls and it's it's got a nice. Uh, Nice, nice, busy uh, commerce, and most of no, most most if not all of the stuff is you know surrounded, protected by walls, right? And uh, but one of the major things of this you know city is there is a lot of uh, strife. There is a lot of you know friction about a certain topic. Right? And the friction is about elves. Right? Elves have just come to the city and they're basically squatting there. Right? The elves, they don't have property. They don't hold, um, they don't hold, like, any, any, uh, any station. Right? They're kind of just bums i mean most of them get by right like i have a few of them as like traders right but none of them hold any like positions in the guard none of them are like any positions of importance or you know theoretical importance right like but all these characters have some you know weight to them right but why are the npcs there right and so I had to think that up. And that was really cool. So I was like, okay. So they're forced home to the west. They're forced home to the west. Has this like um, deep, like chaotic filth to it. You know, like this this tendril sprouting, uh, you know, just grabbing filth to it. And it's consumed their forest home. And they had to flee or whatever, right? And so that's why they're in the city, right? That's why they're basically squatting there. Everyone knows this is a thing, right? But, you know, that's why they're squatting there. So it's stuff like that, right? That I don't think Austin even tries to do. I love a good story. Me, I love a good story, right? But, like, one of the major things with a pen and paper role play or any role play of any kind is I can create all this stuff, right? Everything. From Ragavoot, you know, just, just a little village with a mayor, you know, and a, you know, a couple, a couple houses, you know, and, and stuff. You know, to Teichstein to, you know, f- Fuselmorph, you know, and everything in between, and, you know, but, like, the players decide what they want to do in my world. I'm basically in charge of the sandbox, and they decide what part of it they want to play in, right? But in that area, I can still give them hooks and stuff, right? So there's this quest that is, you know, reliant on a dog, right on the map i have it hinged in one area but there's nothing telling me that i cannot move that i have every power in my being to move that dog to any location you know and then just come up with a a neat you know story idea as to why he moved right why did he move well, you know, he moved so he could find people quicker so he could help his uh, in-distress master, right? Like, boom. 
easy, right? So nothing is hinged into one area and you can use hooks and clever things to reel in the players so they bite. And obviously, if they don't bite, you're kind of screwed in, in that sense. But it's like they don't need to um, bite onto the, you know, the uh, event uh, thing, right? And even if they don't, right, this, this is my take, have it play out anyway, right? So, like, main quest line, the, um, the players are supposed to retrieve the daughter, right? So they retrieve the daughter, and they get back into there, and I have a timer going off the moment they get back into the city with the daughter, right? And I say that about, like, in-game, I'm like, okay, about, like, an hour, if they're dragging their feet... The king is dead, right? If they're dragging their feet for about an hour, the the king is dead. Like, if they're off going to shops and, like, you know, just seeing what, what the heck is going on. If they get distracted, then the king is dead. But, you know, if, if they arrive, like, in-game pretty swiftly, then they're there before, you know, the craziness shenanigans happen, right? And then if they arrive, like... 30 so minutes in, then they're there while the chaos is happening, you know, and it's all that fun stuff. But, like, things that were affected by other things are still going to play out no matter what the players do, right? And you got to just, like, you know, just play around with that, that they can, you know, change or they can... They can affect goings on all over the place, right? But what whether they do it or not doesn't really change much, right? What 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 this kind of it, it brings it brings them back back down to realism, where you're it, it it sends me this message to them, and I don't even know if it's right or not, but this is what I think. I think it's it's all like um. You're not as special as you think, right? Because it's like, oh, wow. You know, we we did this, but then such and such still died. And then, you know, this, this place got blown up to, you know, smithereens, right? So it's, you know, it's, it's <laughs> you're, you're not some special snowflake, like, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm super stoked. I'm super stoked. I'm also a little bit nervous. Because I've, I've GM'd one time. <laughs> one time. I've done it once. And everyone was like, hey, you're, you're pretty good. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. Mark's like, you listen to your players. Um, so I guess that's why he he was a bigger fan of it. Um, I made Gage a custom uh, career, which is basically a class for... Uh, Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, so I guess that's why he was like, "All right, cool, cool," um, and uh, I didn't tell Tyler he couldn't do what he wanted to do. I said he could certainly try, so maybe that's why. But I mean, I'm still like, I have, I have no idea what I'm doing, right? And um, one thing I don't like when when um, when I have no idea what I'm doing, is someone like Mark telling me, like, the rules for stuff. Like, I'm not a fan of that. I understand that the rules are part of the game, right? But it's just, like, the way he said it the first time was... It, how I re- received it was very rude. Like, very, you know, like, in your face. Like, this is the rules. You gotta read them. You gotta read the rules. This is how you play. You can't be doing that. You know, it's, it's like, shut up, man. I'm learning as you're learning, okay? Chill. You know? I, I, th- if, if whatever it is, is mentioned, you know, like, in a non-hostile manner, I, I'm gonna take it a little bit better than if it is. Because if it's not, then I'm gonna be like, <laughs> okay, dude, alright. Jeez. 
you know? Why you come at me with that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's it's amazing to me because uh, Mark, quote-unquote, does not like, uh, you know, role-playing games. He doesn't like D&D, apparently, right? But I think that's just because of all the negative experiences he's had with uh, Austin and all his campaigns. So I have to, I have to, I have to uh, live to deface that notion, right? That uh, every single campaign is is going to end the same, or like the same problems are going to arise from every single campaign, or you know, just stuff like that. Because he's kind of hardwired. He's kind of just like, this is how it is. And if and if this is not how it is, I'm gonna throw a fit. Which is, I think that's a toxic mentality to have. I'm not any better, but I think that's a toxic mentality to have. Uh. So that's uh that's that. The map. The campaign, which I'm super stoked for. Boys are coming today. I said that. I have said that. What else happened? Um, I'm reading Name of the Wind. I'm like almost halfway through. That book's good. Um, how we got to the university. My goodness. Quoth is so smart, dude. And then that one stupid... Uh, that one master. Who was all like... Major butthole. Oh my goodness! If you haven't read the book, I don't. I don't blame you. It's it's huge. It's too huge. But yes, that book is good. Ah, I got so many books I could be reading. <sighs> yeah, it's all right. We get easily distracted. I don't have ADHD, but you know, it's, it's still easy for me to get off track. Like now, I'm trying to figure out what else to say. Or if that was enough. Um. Jeez. Oh, oh, oh. It's magic. No, it's not. Um. So I've been playing through XCOM. And I've been playing through Oblivion. And I've been playing League. So... You guys might already know this, right? But I'm not going to promise anything. I'm not going to say I'm going to do anything. Because every time I do, right? I, I forget to do something one day. And then, it, you know, it, it it just keeps happening. And then, and then it happens again. And then it's just like, okay, what's the point in restarting this, you know, this damn thing? What's, what's the point? So... I'm not going to commit to nothing, right? But if I was, this this is what I would. Okay? This this is the game plan. Okay? Sundays are the talk show days and everybody knows that. Right? Everybody knows that. If if you're here, you know that. Uh nothing is set in stone for Monday or Tuesday. I might stream on those days, league or no, no, yeah. Um, actually, you know, I'm gonna scratch it in. I'm gonna scratch it in. So if if I if I do stream league, it'll be on Mondays. Okay. Just so you know, if if I do stream league, it's on Mondays. That's that's what's happening. Okay. Um. Um. Tuesdays, nothing. Um. If I am playing through Warhammer. I'm going to upload that shit on Wednesdays. Uh, I haven't played that in a while. So that's on the back burner. Um, but I am playing through XCOM. <laughs> the last time I played it, uh, my mechanic called me. And I had to kind of just like leave. And I was kind of distracted because of that. So I kind of uh, made a bunch of mistakes. 
I mean, I kind of just want to restart, but at the same time, right? It's it's possible to save the world still. Uh, it's possible to save the world. So, um, streaming XCOM live um, on Thursdays. Um, and it's this. all of this is up to, you know, how I'm feeling, if I'm up for it, right? But this is the idea, right? So, Thursdays, XCOM live. Um... And then Fridays, um, I'm uploading, like, almost hour-long videos of Oblivion. And I'm playing through that. So, that is the game plan. Like I said, nothing set in stone. And I have the power to veto anything I have just said. With, with one simple, you know, with one simple thing. You know, just just like, ah, uh, how about we not? You know, so I wouldn't get your hopes up on nothing, but you know, just just keep your eyes peeled because I could do something that you're interested in, right? So you never know. And also, you might miss the sound of my beautiful voice, right? Everyone loves the sound of my voice. Apparently, I took a uh, a month long hiatus from talking to people because my sister, Gabby. Um, she said something, and what she said kind of made me a little, you know, angry. And I was angry because I was thinking the same thing that she said. And I was thinking it the whole day. So the whole day I was all like, no one's listening to what I'm saying. <laughs> What's the point in talking? Communication is overrated. Like, comms are overrated. That's what I was thinking, man. And then she tells me, uh, and then and, and then she says something, and then she's all like, uh, "Jeez, why are you talking? You should just shut up." <laughs> and I was thinking that the whole day. I'm like, "What's the point in talking?" <laughs> so I'm like, "All right, fuck it. I'm not gonna talk for a month." So I did that, right? My goodness, the best month of my life. The best month of my life. My goodness. It was fine until like the last uh me getting stuck on the optimizer with two new bastards was so annoying. And Colin, who don't lift a finger to do zip. I mean, that guy's still being hired there. It's just amazing. The guy, like he shows up there and he don't even do nothing. And then he'll just like walk around and he, you know, he might he might help a little bit, but it's like he, he usually just gets in the way. He just gets in the way, man. Like what the hell? And then he walked up to me, and he's all like, "So what are you been telling the new guys?" And I just I shrugged my shoulders because I didn't tell him nothing. I was under the impression, right, that they can learn from just watching me, and if they can't watch me. And pick up anything, then they're retarded and they shouldn't be here. And I still stand by that, hundred percent, right? Um, so which which is just you, you know, it's you stupid. So, and then uh, like apparently Lisa talked to Chad. I bet it. I bet it was Colin and Lisa that were like, this guy needs to talk. Fuck those two people in particular. Fuck them both. Because that's, that's... I did not get hired to talk. I did not get hired to communicate with nobody. I got hired to move boards. And that's what I'm doing. I, I proved it that I can... That I can do my job and not run my mouth at all for a month. So what is, what is with these people, man? That <laughs> just, they're dumb. They're dumb. I got so irritated that I got off track. But you know what? Maybe that's fine cuz it's on brand, right? It's on brand. Oh, right. Month long hiatus, Gabby work. Oh yeah. And everyone like uh this guy I know at work, Jose was trying to get me to to talk um the most difficult um encounter was the little ones the kids Lindley and um the jones boys and uh terry my goodness dude 
Ah, I was so like when I was around those the kids, I was like, why did I decide to do this? But when I was around like adults or people older than me or my parents or you know Gabby, I was all like, I made the right choice. So I don't know what that means. It's just an observation I have observed from myself. So. You, know, you can just you can dissect that in your own time. I will not. I will not. Well, all right. This this has been good. I'm gonna finish this cookie, and you can go about your day.